Yo, yo, what's going on everybody? It is Julian Mitchell here for Complex Hustle. We are having another installment of our Office Hour series where we just have conversations with people who are changing the game, influencing the culture, uh, setting new bars, disrupting, setting trends. Um, and a lot of times people who are behind the scenes, people who are making a lot of things happen um, and influencing people. So today we have a very special guest, my man Rashad Drake. Man, what's up, Sham? What's going on? So Rashad right. is a marketer, curator, um, creator of sorts, uh, works with Revolt TV and content development. Uh, before when I met Rashad, you were doing a lot of the brand marketing, well, it was integrated marketing yeah, at the time, yeah. um, where you were working with a lot of brands, so you were doing deals, working on deals with Beats, and a lot of other um, big brands that Revolt works with now. Sure. Um, so we're just gonna have a dope conversation, we're just gonna op talk openly about just influence, culture, how the game is changing, what the kind of new creative class is. Um, so, you know, I wanna just jump into it. We were talking a little bit before, um, the word culture, yeah. right? Like, that's become, such an ambiguous buzzwords, antiquated buzzword. Yeah. Um, but when we talk about it, it's very particular. It's very intentional. Yeah. Um, so how do you define culture, and how do you put it in the context of, you know, where we are yeah. in society? Now? Yeah, for sure. For for me, I always look at culture through the lens of hip hop, right? Mm -hmm. So it, it's almost one of those things like people that speak our language, they know when I say culture what it means. Right. And so through the lens of hip hop, and hip hop now is pop culture. Absolutely. Like as, as Kanye said. It's almost been that for a, de a decade. It's a decade now. Yeah, it's for a sure. straight, for over a decade now, hip hop has been pop culture. Right. So, and again, when we're talking about hip hop culture, we're talking about beyond the music, we're talking about lifestyle, we're talking about language, we're talking, right. you know, we're talking about even food, like, like in, you know, how we party, the lifestyle, everything is kind of encompassed, encompassed into that. And so, um, that's why when I say culture, I think that's right. what it is. And also, culture is also, you know, more more so now than ever, also what's going on in society from um, the perspective of social justice and politics. So it's like right. all of that. Is kind of well, I think I think hip hop. What people can overlook at times is hip hop almost set the definition of culture, like culture in general, yep. being a look, a sound, yep. a lifestyle, as yep. you mean, an attitude, a value system, a movement, like. Yep. That's kind of what that was. I love the value system. That's the value cool. system. It was about family. It was yeah. about your neighborhood. Yeah. It was about pride. It was about having a sense aspiration. of aspiration. Aspiration. That was the biggest one. Like hip hop at the core was aspirational. Yeah. Now in a generation today, you talk about a generation of entrepreneurship, a generation of like going after what you want, doing it on your own terms. That's the aspiration that mm -hmm. hip hop, the ethos of hip hop was really born off of like people getting it on their own and doing it on their own. But it's interesting because when you think about it, hip hop was about changing the way people looked at and lived their lives, right? Like so, hip hop literally did that from yeah. like what you wore literally yeah. to what you said, what you drove. You talk about language, <laughs> right? Globally. Yeah. So now, when we look at that, that was basically saying people can take a nuance experience, mm -hmm. which hip hop was really about. People take nuance experiences. You can take that and actually create a way, a blueprint for how people can live their lives, how they can dress, how they can do that. So I think kids like us who grew up in the hip hop era, like when we grew up, and now hip hop being mainstream, that's kind of giving people that push and that blueprint to say, you guys are students of hip hop which created this culture. Mm -hmm. So now you give back to it and create your own culture. Yeah. You know, and I think what you brought up earlier was really dope because that is where we're at. It's like you have people like us who are millennials, right? Mm -hmm. Who are creative and have aspirations, but we're kids of the culture that became pop culture. Yeah. So it's like we have the keys, like we have a lot of the control and the advantage. And that, do you feel that way? I, I do. And, and every generation has had it, right? Right, right, right. So every generation has kind of built upon, you know, what started up in the Bronx, you know, like right. we all have, like, uh, it's, I look at it like a painting, a portrait, and like every generation has this, has this opportunity to leave its mark. And I, I look at what we're doing, and I feel every day, right? Like every day, like my number one goal is to always be authentic. I'm a student of the game. Like, and it's right. so funny, like the older I get, the more and more I'm, I'm the protector in chief, uh, especially like when we're in, off, in, the, in the office and we're having conversations like around um, Drake not writing his own rhymes and like how right. like the younger guys like 
I don't care about that. Like, as long as it's hot. I'm like, no, bro. Like, you right. can't, it doesn't work that way. And, like, you know, so I, 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 I feel, you know, very much responsible for, for keeping um, the culture authentic as possible and wanting to see it expand at the same time. Right. You know? Um, so, like, I have problems when it's exploited. I do have problems when it's, um, when people are leveraging, you know, um, our culture, our music, our lifestyle for, you know, you know, for an ad dollar or whatever, but they're not giving something back. Right. And so, like, I, like one of my favorite campaigns we did at Revolt was the McDonald's um, um, Local Love Tour. It was awesome because, like, McDonald's, they, like, they, you know, they wanted to find ways to reach out to the African American community. Um, and by doing the Local Love Tour, they were giving artists in, in these local markets that are now actually, funny enough, you know, kind of blossoming and blowing up an opportunity to really share their story and their music. And I'm like, that's the cultural exchange that has to happen. Right. And so, to me, I, I feel like I have responsibility to always make sure that happens. Right, definitely. I think when you talk about that too, it's, it's interesting. You brought up the point of um, like the younger rappers, and of yeah. course, we've heard all the Lil Yachty stuff, right? Yeah, yeah. But I think that is a perfect metaphor for a lot of what we see now, right? Because mm -hmm. you see so many success stories that are built on brands that just kind of even uncontrollably or unexpectedly yeah. take off because yeah. everybody has an audience, everybody has something to say. Mm -hmm. But even going back to how hip hop laid the blueprint, you look at basketball, how Michael Jordan being the greatest change basketball. Made basketball prime time. Like, yep. Took the NBA to getting these multi-billion dollar TV deals. Flipped that to hip hop, Jay-Z was the first, like the Michael Jordan of rap in terms of, he took it to a place, nobody, he's the first to take it mm -hmm. to where it was this global business, like, and he was the, the biggest dude in rap and the biggest businessman in rap, like at the same time, pretty much, and made that a thing. It's like, but he's all. But he but just, you know. Yeah. But he's also. That's what I'm saying. Like, like Michael Jordan's Michael Jordan. But like before him, you had Julius Irvin, yeah. right? Who had brought the flash and the coolness. You had Magic Johnson who did the same thing, and then Jordan just far and above just took it to another level. Right. And it's like Hove took it to another level. But before him, it was like Russell Simmons with Fat Farm and Puff with Sean John, you know. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, so it's like every you know every generation kind of like every at every moment like there's. You're building upon the person before you. Like, that's why I love LeBron. LeBron has such a appreciation for the history of, of of basketball. Like he was on his own podcast not too long ago, actually actually breaking down like a play in which Jordan like you know d deferred to another player. And he talked about the importance of like having great teammates. And he used right. that play like like and like broke down every movement within that play and like why it was successful. And like that's I think that's part of you know knowing your history to know where you're going. Like that's a part of like. The, the maturation of hip hop as we continuously get older, like that has to be at the essence of it. And like, so yeah, like when like Yadi is saying like, you know, like, you know, yeah, I don't need to know about that. I can just do my thing. I'm like, it, it, it hurts me because it's like, yo bro, like you exist because of all these people that came before. Well, you bring up the point because it's not about being successful. Yeah. It's not to say right. you do this because you're not going to sell any records if you don't write your raps mm -hmm. or if you don't study the game, you're not going to be the biggest artist mm -hmm. in the world. It's that you're not going to transcend your forefathers. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because when you look at, and I think this is a great segue into what we would talk about too, is when you look at the people who are coming up, Chance the Rapper, mm -hmm. right, and how he's skyrocketed, mm -hmm. they know both sides. They're people, Frank Ocean, right, The what, he, what he's done, you would Incredible. say, Yes, they understand that they can do things their way and they're incredibly talented and they have a fan base, but they're also very focused on impacting the business, yeah. changing the culture. Legacy. Doing new things. Yeah, it's like yeah. it's like legacy. And yeah. you can't do that without studying, without paying attention, without being savvy, without making smart moves mm -hmm. in your career. You can't just be like, yo, I'm just gonna ride this wave and do what I want. But I think it's people who know both sides. And you literally know both sides in terms of you know the culture, you know the people, you know your audience, your peers, but you also know access, success, the business, the suits, as they say. <laughs> the suits. <laughs> you know, like, you can navigate both sides. And I think that's a good segue, too, into the type of hybrid employees or marketers, would say, we see now. You know, I think we're in a time where, and we, we've talked about this plenty of times, yeah, yeah. like, it's these undefinable, roles it's, su it's, right? it's a blessing and the curse man right it's right. a blessing and curse because you know 
it's hard to find way like it's hard for people that don't understand it to like utilize you in the right way right right so like while I was on the sales side it's like well you're a sales guy like you should be talking right. to us about like you know what we're doing with content and culture and like and I'm like nah bro like this is what I do but like, I'm still from like Queens New York and like mm -hmm. you know I, I you know salute to Dreamville and the Fiends like I, you know I work with you know with, with, with those guys I'm like no like like I live this you know it's right. not just about sales and so and, and then like you know to your point I think I tell people all the time I think you know, I, I'm blessed to sit in a certain space because of the, just the experiences that I've had. All right, so like I worked, in, I worked on the Obama campaign, worked in the Obama administration, then I worked at Madison Square Garden Company, which is like a large you know, corporate sports entertainment right. um, company. I worked at IMG, another large you know agency, and then came to Revolt, you know, a multi-platform you know TV network. And then on top of that, the work I do, you know, with Fiends right. and. Um, and, and, and then the work I do in social justice. So right. just by literally doing those seven different things, it just help, it brings all those worlds together. And then like doing technology stuff with like, you know, Jessica Matthews and other, and other uh, amazing uh, young entrepreneurs. So just by being in all those worlds, everything kind of converges. And so right. I'm able to kind of say, oh, okay, Jess is doing this. It makes sense for you to meet this person. Or, you know, Kevin Lyles is doing this. Oh, it makes sense for you to meet this person. And like, of course. A, 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 like connecting in human capital and human currency, that to me is like, Incredibly but, important building those relationships, and we've seen that, and that's true. And those those things are genuinely a reflection of who you are. Right? Yeah. It's <laughs> like when you look at your self as value, right? You get paid for your value, not your time. When you see your value, and you see that it naturally goes in all these places, and you can be as effective and productive and progressive in all these spaces at the same time. It's not that we're not in that era where it's like jack of all trades, master of none. Yeah. If you know what your value is yeah. you can actually master and be in all these spaces For sure but i think it almost does give this confused kind of understanding right because people can't label you well, they're like Yo, you ask what me, what are you yeah if you, you ask me right now like what are you i couldn't label myself right it's it's really that it's it's really hard like to your point like me connecting people like that's just literally that's who i am like right. and and like people have done it for me and like i just like to see people succeed so like if Julian says, oh, I have this dope idea, and I'm like, and like, you know, I need to build a website for it, and I'm like, oh, I know a guy who's right. super dope and incredible, you guys should connect, like, I'm just gonna do that. Right. So like, just finding those, finding those, those, um, those, those intersections is just a natural thing for me. And so, it, it, it's, um, but yeah, to go back to it, it's like, it's a, it's a very, it's a weird space to be in, because it's like, it's hard for, to work in the company, it's really hard for them to define what you right. do, and like, how they utilize you, and so like, you know, for me, for a long time, I was bull in a china shop. I, I wasn't trying to be, but I was like, hey, like just different ideas or, or like, you right. know, pushing pushing certain things. It's like, I'm just gonna keep moving until someone slaps my hand. And if I get my hand slapped, I'm like, all right, cool, I'm gonna go this way. And, and it, it takes someone to say, you know what? Like, I see what you do, I see who you are, and I'm gonna embrace all of it. And I'm gonna allow you to tell me, like, how we can utilize you. Steve Jobs had a great quote someone put on my desk the other day. You know, we don't hire, we don't hire smart people to tell them what to do. We hire smart people so they can tell us what to do. Right. And that's the point. Right. You bring in smart people to be like, I would need your advice. I want your recommendation. Like, you know, I'm, I'm 29, I'm getting old, I got some gray coming in the air, in my, in my hair. So like, I have a young team, mostly like 23, 24 year olds. Right. Like they're on the stuff that I don't know about. Like my younger brother's on the stuff that I don't know about. I'm gonna ask like, bro, like, all right, like, what am I missing? Where are my blind spots? And, like, I think that's something that I think as we get older, you know, as the OGs, ah. we just have to, we have to always right. be receptive to that as well. Like, all right, like, like I know I have blind spots. Help me fill them. And, and I think um, that's going to be the key. And so I know when I manage people, I try my best, you know, to make sure that that I'm I'm recognizing their talents and their, their abilities, their strengths and weaknesses. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna and I'm going to lean on those strengths and like put them in positions to succeed, right. and like you know, and it, it's so funny. Like I remember um, working at IMG, and I got in trouble for pitching to the clients so much like social media, like um, like social media uh, like initiatives, and. IMG was like, no, that, like we need signage. We need to focus on signage in the arenas. Right, we right. need to focus on test drives uh, at, the, at the dealership. Oh, we don't need man. all this social yeah. and digital stuff. And I just look back. I'm like, yo, it's just so crazy. Like, you know, we could have been so far ahead of the curve. You know, it's so you know, crazy. And like now here we are, like, you know, like that same company that now spends almost 40% of their, of their ad revenue 
on like digital and social. It's like yeah. how crazy the paradigm shifts, but like it's also not like when you have fifty year old people telling twenty year old twenty five year olds like, no, I know how to reach I know how to I know how to reach the millennials. I know how to reach millennials. You right. listen to me. And that's so like that's the problem I think we have with some of the inner generation. Yeah, issues. it's it's the simplest uh, meme worthy Kanye <laughs> quote that so is listen to the kids, kids, bro. bro. It's yes. like um, <laughs> I remember in 2012 um, when we were first starting out, they were both doing social media, yeah. and I was like, "Yo," to the point we're making now, is that you just need people who are multi. Our generation, really, our creative class are multifaceted, yes. multi-dimensional, cross-disciplinary. If you know, if you're only good at one thing, I don't want to hire you. Right. I don't hire you. You, you don't want not. to because you're not effective because nope. you probably the chances are that somebody who's doing a job in another department could do your job exactly you know and all it takes is for you to bring them in a couple meetings or exactly. do something and you get that same value but the idea was curators right I remember being like yo we should get music or style curators who just lived their own lane right so mm -hmm. if it was somebody who was up on selection and that whole wave mm -hmm. of like creativity and merging genres and global music and culture and style they could write produce interview all of that just make that their job yeah. like to bring be a pipeline to bring that whole culture and translate it through content through music through whatever and get people who live those who are passionate and just let them pour that yeah. into what you're doing but it seems so crazy they're like what are they? Are they social media? Are they writers? Are they producers? Are they gonna take yeah. people's jobs? It was yeah. like, yeah. now it's like you're just hiring people to be themselves and give that value and expose you, like yeah. open you up to these lanes you're not too before. You fast forward that now, like being a curator is like a really big thing. Like mm -hmm. brands are throwing ridiculous amounts of money. Yeah. And not at like we were talking about bloggers per se, like people who just may write about it but people who literally are just multi-disciplinary, like not only can they create content, they can be in the boardroom mm -hmm. with the CMOs, mm -hmm. with the sales team, mm -hmm. and give them a very thorough understanding yeah. of how the trends are changing and what yeah. can happen. It's like, those people are very powerful. Mm -hmm. Those positions are very powerful. And, and, and incredibly powerful, and I think as you look at, like, remember we went through, there was a phase where like all these brands were hiring these creative, these artist creative director yeah. and like that kind of went away and like now it's like you know now we're hiring these influencers to come in and kind of tell us what to do these curators come and tell us what to do i think i also want to charge marketers um to get out the office man where touch the you got to touch the people and like i i just don't understand if you're trying to reach um Afri i'm just gonna use this like multicultural um millennials between ages of uh, 18 to 25 but you, you're not talking to multiculturals between the ages of 18, 25 personally. Well, you gotta remember, for people who don't understand, if you've not been in the advertising or marketing business, mm -hmm. general market, up until about 2013, 2012, yeah. 2013, literally was white. white. <laughs> and multicultural was just considered black yeah. or segmented yeah. marketing. The budgets were so... Dis so different. So oh my different. Gosh. Yeah. But you had to fight with people to say that multicultural was mainstream. Yeah. This is not even five yeah. years ago. And you ask people, in the, in the, you ask some, some black folks in advertising, they're still fighting that fight. Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> You're right. All right. the time. But I, I think that's important yeah. to like think about. Like That's not even five years ago that people have been fighting to tell people how powerful and, yeah. and, and what multicultural really is the value of it is I got a funny story one of my friends who's at, who works at an advertising agency they were pitching um, a champ they were they were putting together a pitch for a shampoo um, brand and they're in a room um, she she she's she's a she's a white woman um, super super dope and woke <laughs> and she's in a room with other white folks mm -hmm. and they're pitching uh, um, the shampoo thing the shampoo uh, brand and they're pitching it using the african-american woman as the as the uh, as a subject, right? And so, the the career the well, the career person I was working on the on the account gets up and, and she says, um, so, you know, we're, here's the storyboard. Woman wakes up, her hair is all over the place. She goes to the bathroom and she's running late for an interview. Right. She gets in the shower, she uses the product, she comes out and it's magical and like and like people are like okay cool cool cool. So my wife friend she raises her hands like, 
um, black women don't wake up with their hair all over the place because they wrap their hair at night. So, like culturally, like mm -hmm. you're missing you're missing the mark on that. And like, everyone's like, and it's like those small nuances. Those are the type of things that are, are missed when you're not um, you're not engaged in the culture in which you're trying to impact or right. trying to um, influence or have use your products. And I think that's where it's like. I, I urge marketers just to touch the people, talk to the people. Right. God gave us two ears and one mouth for a reason. Yeah. Like we should use it, use them accordingly. Um, I think that's like the biggest advice I give to right. to folks in that space. It is. It feels like it's stripped away, right? Like mm -hmm. I had somebody when I first got into advertising, they told me they said, "Yo, I wasn't too familiar with the business," and they just said, "No, nah, you got to understand that you have the the intangibles. Like you can learn the business, but yeah. the way the business was changing, it's like if you had." A knowledge and you live the culture mm -hmm. that was going to be more valuable in the long run For I think sure. now you didn't have to go to ad school or get that degree yeah. and I think now you're seeing that it's like when Nipsey says on oh, mailbox money like the big companies will crumble it's not even necessarily the business I think it's the idea that the criteria and what you need to be successful is not traditional anymore yeah. in terms of you don't need to get a, a MBA from Harvard yeah. and go to business school to be the most effective and successful marketer 100%. in the game. Mm -hmm. You just have to be smart, progressive, know the game, but do the work, be mm -hmm. out. You have to know what's going yeah. on. You have to like live the culture. So, yeah. so how would you, because we got like 10 minutes, I yeah, wanna make it sure. super effective. Like how would you define even a role like your own? Like if, if people are watching, trying to, trying to make sense of it, like yeah. how do you kind of put that in perspective for, for creators who are multi-dimensional? Yeah, I think what I do now, I mean, I, so I, I always say, I, I, I see myself as like a vessel for, for the culture, right? And so right now at Revolt, I oversee our social media team and I help um, uh, lead our team that does a lot of our original digital uh, content. Um, but like, you know, it, it, it's more than that. Like, I, like right. I, I'm, I'm that, but I'm also I, I call myself like a pinch hitter, right? Like I come in where needed. Um, but, but really, it's like always from the perspective. Of, all right, so when Revolt, we're doing all the stuff that we're doing. It's I want to do like the stuff we do, like the push editorial and, and um, you know, and then push you know the content we're creating. But I want to make sure that we're also in the process of doing all that that we're telling incredible stories that no one else is telling. Right. Um, so like we're working on a whole bunch of stuff now um, that I'm really excited about that'll, that'll come, come to life. You know, I've been in this new role only since April, so I'm excited about the same stuff we're working on. And like, it's really, I think, within the lens of what um, Mr. Combs' mission was. It's like, like I wanna go, and, and we're going, where other people are not going. I think that's incredibly important in telling the authentic, authentic stories within our culture. Um, and so for me, it's, it's just always in the lens of, you know, telling 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 great stories, and um, being a vessel for what's happening. So like, I may not know everything, but like, or you know, but like, I want to if if I if I see something happening in culture that that's that's topical that people are, are, grasp, are gravitating to gravitating to, even if it's not music, like if it's Colin Kaepernick, if it's um, what's happening with Juve. Um, here in Brooklyn, and, and some of the violence that people are having conversations about right. canceling it, or, or or moving it, or or and, or like you know what you know what should the outcome be, whether it's um, anything in, in those realms, like like I want to have that conversation, right? And, and and at minimum, allow people to think, um, allow people to act, um, and allow people to have conversations to change, right? And so like that, like those are like that's kind of like the like the thesis of like what I do, right? How would you say too, because when you see young people coming up, millennials, people like us, that may not have the experience in corporate America, may not have been in specific industries, but they look at it and they still have the mindset of, well, do I have to be in the music business <coughs> to do this? Do I have to be in the media business to do this? Do I need to be in advertising and marketing to do this? Like, what do you tell them who are still in that space of they don't, know how possible it is to you're talking to a guy that was a political science major <laughs> at Hampton University worked in politics I mean I am j just such a, a proponent of going and doing it I know it sounds sounds so like you know like everyone says that but like step into it and but like 
when I say go do it, don't like go and do it. Like don't like I meet people all the time. They say I want to be a, I want to be a PR. I want to be a PR. Um, you know, a PR specialist. I want to do PR, but they're not masters at writing. They couldn't name me the three top PR agencies. You know, um, they couldn't tell me how they would execute um, execute a, a media advisory and how they would build a PR strategy. Like so, like if you can't do these things, then like, right. you, why are you going to do PR? Is it the glitz and the glam? Like this, like the best people I know that are P, that that master PR, are they're English majors, and we're like an AP English, and like they really grasp like the English language and, and they're right. very good thing. and also they're strategic thinkers right. so my thing is like always like you, you're doing social media then like all right cool if that's what you want to do but like I want you to be able to talk to me about like Facebook's API's I want you to be able to talk to me about the changing landscape of live streaming and like be able to intelligently talk to me about it like you know so like become a master of what you're doing so do right. it but become a master at it um, understanding how to read Google Analytics, right? You know, like right. like stuff like that, and Nielsen Social Guide, and and and, um, and and Data Studio. So like that's what I want to see from young people that want to be in these spaces. It's like, all right, like I people all the time like, man, you look, you have a great job. I see you on Instagram. I'm like, yeah, that's cool, but like from like 9:30 to to right. 11 o'clock at night, like we're working, like you know, we're 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 it's nonstop, and you know, so. Like the, those are kind of like the good moments, but like you know behind the scenes, like we're we're actually like putting rubber to the road. Right, and we we got five minutes left. So yeah, I think we can sum it up too. Is cool. one thing I wanted to touch on as we end is influence. We talked about too. Yes, yes. Because I think now we're in a time where the term influencer, having influence, Oof. impact, all those things are blurred. The lines of those are blurred, or they're just well, the people that own. are considered influencers and don't influence right a damn thing. That's very true, <laughs> right? And I and I do think there's levels to influence too. Um, we, we talked about that. I did a video that was like the three types of influence and it was like the influence of your peers. So people who are very impactful when it's in their, their group. Mm -hmm. But outside of that, no. Then there's people who are to the masses, like an artist who may just mm -hmm. have millions of fans but mm -hmm. no pull in the industry, no ability to change anything. Mm -hmm. Then you have those who influence the influencers, people who mm -hmm. may have 2,000 followers, but those 2,000 followers are the most powerful and people. those are the people I care about. Right, on the yeah. planet. Yeah. So like, where are we? Because you saw blogs, you know, it used to be the DJ, everybody with the access, then it went to the blogging era, then out of the blogging era, you had social media stars. Mm -hmm. Now I think we're at a time where you have smart, impactful people who are those influencers you talk about who are building platforms, businesses, advising mm -hmm. leaders, and those people have a voice as well. Mm -hmm. And so they're teaching, talking, but also changing the game. But like, where do you think we're at with influence? Yeah, I love, you know, we talked about that earlier, like there are yeah. the stages and progressions of like influence going from DJ to now. And like, those are the people I care about, man. That last group we talked about. Right. Like, um, shout out to Devin Smith, who's, who works on uh, my team at Revolt. Right. Like, he launched a platform called Crowdsource where we highlight- He's a very smart dude. Very smart dude. Right. He he highlights every, every week, like all of these like artists and curators um, and influencers that have like, you go look at their page, like 2,000 followers, but like they're creating incredible stuff and like from architecture to painting to photography and like Jimmy Drummond like he's about to become like the first African-American um, to graduate from from Parsons School of Designs like dual program like right. 24 year old literally like American history like he's American history the living right. history right and it's like those are the people that will that will real that will actually shift culture and like I think we're moving to a space so that if you're not actually creating things, then you don't matter. Mm -hmm. Like, who are the people that are creating things? I don't want to. I don't. I don't, I don't want to talk to you about your social influence. Like, are you building things? Are you creating things? Like, are you are you moving ROI for companies? Are you are you driving shifts and trends? Like that to me um, is where we're moving to. It's like, like what have you actually done? And so like, like I make sure that any chance I get, I could use my platform to highlight those people. Mm -hmm. And so like that's why I get, I get really excited when. Um, you know, when I get to talk to people like that. And I, I look at yourself, like you're one of those people, like that's just super smart, multifaceted, like you need to be on every panel <laughs> at every school um, because it's important, like you, you've you mastered like the, the, you know, the art of writing, you've mastered social media, like you've mastered um, the di um, like, you know, understanding the digital landscape and, and trends, like that's important. I think that's where the industry is moving and the folks that that um, that are seen as influencers, they're going to lean on on th that that generation 
Um, I'm sure they hit your mind all the time. Yeah, no. <laughs> but I, I would say, and I, and I, that's just what it is. But the last, the last thing I would end on too is, I and think, it's all love. Uh, it's all good. Yeah, because we got like less than a minute, maybe. But I think it's important to know because we started this whole conversation with hip hop and culture. And yes. Music. yes. If you looked at hip hop in terms of independent, how the ones who really had a vision broke free and said we're going to do our own thing, and yeah. so now independent is the major label. Yes. That's the same way subculture has just become pop culture. It yeah. used to be that the subcultures powered yeah. popular culture. Now you're at a place where all these subcultures coexist, mm -hmm. right? Like whether it's streetwear, whether it's all these yeah. things, like there's no underground is above ground yes. now. Yes. That's like what yes. access and everything is done. Yeah. So I think what that did was too was it takes the people who were truly change makers on a street level that you only Crazy. knew yeah. there. Brings you to the forefront. Yeah. Yep. Without them needing to get a cosign, exactly. get boosted up like those yeah. people now. Yeah. You can't finesse. Yeah. And, 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 and yeah, you, that's the yeah. word. I, you can't. You can't. You no longer can front. Like you right. can't front anymore, right? Like you're you're called out if you don't have depth, if you don't know what you're talking about, if you're not executing. Like right. it, we we see you, and right. I think that's important. So like the people that you're talking about are now coming to the forefront. People are like, all right, I, I like, all right, like. He knows or she knows what what they're talking about. Right. Like that's the person I need to connect myself to. Right, right, right. Yeah, and that's, that's a big one. And, and, and independence. I want to talk talk on that like for a quick ten seconds. I, I I'm really um, excited to see like the chances the chance of ch chance for rappers to succeed. And I look at what Nas said, you know, on um, on his track on uh, Khaled's album. Yeah, Nas album. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm excited about like, that. Hanging with shoes and jackets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, 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 I love that. <laughs> But even when you talk about the importance of independence and building your own labels, like right. like this, his whole verse was really about like like independence and empowering yourself. Really, yeah. and, and I love that. And I th I think that um, I I'm a preacher all the time. I, I I don't see how labels can survive in 15 years. I just don't see like right now labels more than ever are becoming just banks. You yeah. know that that give out loans. <laughs> and yeah. so when we get to the point where streaming services become larger. Um, and you know, as an independent artist, you now own your, your database of fans. So you now, you know, you can own the targeting. You know, like if I go and I perform in Chicago, like I know exactly who those fans are. I know who bought it's my like merch. Super fun, Brian. Yeah. Brian Leslie was talking about that. Yeah. 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 Like now, he, he brought up the example like being in Germany, like in Berlin. Like he knows what fan bought, like has been to his last three concerts. He knows. He knows how much merch they bought. He knows they follow him on social. And he's able to like kind of leverage all that to be like, all right, I know exactly the 500 people that I, I absolutely know will come to my show in Berlin, or I can actually I can talk to specifically about something I, something that's related to them and in my music. And it's like that's where I think we're moving. Where it's direct to consumer, which we're already doing now with social, and you look at even like what Apple Music Connect is doing and stuff like that. Where it's like, all right, we're, move, we're moving the middleman. We're, we're we're removing the label. I can talk directly to my fans, and so that's where we're moving. Right to personal, yeah. Yeah. yeah, customer relations to personal relationships. It's exactly. CRM to PRM. I like that. Ooh. Yeah, so, tweet um, that. <laughs> but yeah, we got to wrap it up. Thank you, everybody. If you tuned in, um, you can follow Rashad Drakeford at Rashad Drakeford on uh, Twitter and Instagram. Correct. Correct. All right, um, and we will. Uh, Get up with the next one with the Office Hours. Uh, make sure you go to youtube.com uh, backslash complex hustle.